And so you have to change the mindset and do things a different way. And so that's the one thing I wanted to talk about, how we invest time and money and, and to our, we should invest into our, our own time doing things that's for us. It's not selfish. Investing money in us, whether it's doing something to take care of yourself or it's planning trips or doing something that costs our money or sowing seeds into something, whatever it is, investing into things or, or businesses, whatever, ministry, anything. Some of us spend so much time even at church that everything else is just falling apart. That is out of order. That's not even right. That is out of order. You can still get your life. You have to take care of yourself. I was sharing with someone today about, we was talk, having a conversation about ministry. And I said, you know, it's out of order when you don't take care of your household, but you're running a ministry, but everything else is falling apart. Your home life, your house, your family, you're not, you're neglecting your children. You're not spending time with your spouse, but you're over here nurturing this thing. I said, that's out of order too, because your house, your family comes first. If you can't organize and maintain and manage things at home, no one said you have to do it perfectly. However, if you're neglecting that area, how are you going to, that's out of order. It's just not right. It's, it's, you, you need to reprioritize God first. But if you put in God first, he's going to tell you some wisdom. He's going to tell you, you got to take care of your family. If you are, you have to be a good steward over anything God gives you. If you are married and you have children, your first priority is your spouse and your children, your home. Then you can see about taking care of this ministry or this job or whatever issue you do, this cause that you're part of. So sometimes we need to rethink things and redo things over again. Never too late. As long as we have breath in our body, it's never too late. So I want you to know that you are worth your investment, meaning investing in yourself. Taking care of yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, take care of yourself. And while you have time to do that, you need to start doing it. I'm doing, I'm, look, that's an everyday thing for me. I, I look, I talk to myself, Cheryl, you need to do this. You need to take out some time. You need to put that away for now. Maybe I just need to relax. Maybe I need to take a nap. <laughs> you know, maybe I need to work on my stuff. You know, putting in a lot of time, doing a lot of other things, but I need to take care of my th things that I want to do. You know, things that I want to engage in, people that I want to, it's just a lot. And, you know, I know everybody has, I don't know if everybody knows, but a lot of us um, engage in activities that bring us joy and bring us passion and make us feel happy. Me, I like to visit friends and family. Look, I'm very... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say impulsive. I'm not impulsive, which we all can be sometimes, but I'm spontaneous. That's a better word. I may think of something at the spur of the moment. You know what? I'm going to jump in my car and go visit my girlfriend in Maryland or Riley, or maybe I'll just drive to Charlotte, or maybe I'll go to New York. I'll just do something like that. I'm like, who said I couldn't do anything like that? If I'm good, my car is good, got some change in my pocket, got some gas money money to buy some food or whatever I need to do. I'll go do that. I don't have to do anything extravagant. I can just go visit some friends and some family and just have a good time laughing and enjoying myself. That's a mental break for me, especially I'm in the field of counseling and working with people and serving people in the mental health field. Oh, I find ways to just take a break mentally and to just have fun, just little stuff like that. It's just, it makes life more better for me. Um, I like I like to laugh. I like to go have dinner with friends. I'll do it by myself too. And I'm good to go. I'm easy to please. I really am. I'm just a no-nonsense person. You know, when somebody's coming to me with a whole lot of drama and confusion, I'm like, no, I don't want, that's okay. I'm all good. <laughs> Gotta be with you. You know, I don't like that because I tell everybody my whole my main purpose in life is to pursue after peace and to have peace and to maintain my peace as much as possible. Because there's a lot of things out here that will take your mind, like I said, and just cause so much distress in your life. And so I teach my own self how to cope, 
how to deal with stuff, how to deal with people. So, you know, I have applied my own strategies that I give my clients. I use them on myself and I, and I reiterate it. When I'm reiterating strategies and interventions that people can use to keep themselves regulated and, and coping and, and just, you know, whatever they need to do to make life worth living, feeling happy, being joyous, or just being by themselves so they can get a moment taking a break. When I'm telling other people to do, I'm doing it as well. I'm telling myself like, okay, Sherwin, you need to do the same thing. <laughs> you need to go, you need to relax, whatever, whatever. But I mean, life is short in a sense. So mm -hmm. I'm learning to be grateful for every day that I have. Thanking God for every day that I'm living and for, you know, family and friends and all those things that a lot of us take for granted. So invest in yourself. We invest time, we invest money, we invest our resources. We need to invest the time, money, resources into ourselves, our mind and our spirit. We need to build ourselves up. That is another way of investing into yourself because you can be spending, become expendable to so many other things and people and you neglect, neglect yourself, your time. And you wonder why time is passing and you have to look back, take a, 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 a break sometime and reflect on some things and reprioritize and repurpose things. And it's and write those things down. Let me do. I need to reprioritize things in my life, because when you see a pattern going on of dysfunction, that's when you need to, to take a step back and say, OK, what am I doing wrong? What am I not doing or what I should be doing? That can be a vision board. Hello, somebody. That can be a vision board. Vision boards don't have to be limited to your career or your future and your purpose and your passion and your destiny and, and material things. It can be it can be something that's focused on how to take care of yourself. So it can be a self-care vision board, you know, um, a passion vision board, vision board, things that you want to do that you have that brings you fun, that brings you excitement. You can have a vision board that's focused just on those things alone. So it don't have to be about a job, a career. Uh, it could be like a, taking trips, something creative, maybe a creative arts class that you want to join, maybe a dance class that you want to take. Stuff that we said we want to do, we keep putting off. Some of us are masters at procrastination, let me tell you. And you put that stuff off. So sometimes some of you need to practice being spontaneous because a lot of times people are not spontaneous. Everything always have to be planned out for them. And let me tell you, when things don't go right, you add more stress to your life. So this is for somebody as well who need to learn how to do that. Don't overthink a thing. Do it. Just go out and just do it. Don't talk yourself. Don't think about it too long because this is what some people like that do. They keep, they think about it too long. The process is going to take. How far I got to go. All that stuff. By the time you finish that mentally, you're already tied in your mind and then you end up changing your mind and you won't do anything at all. And then you have regrets and resentment. So I'm telling you to go after those things. Be spontaneous. Live. You know, you have to take risk. And that's one thing I know some people, they're so conditioned to having everything planned out, seeing everything, knowing the end. You don't always know the end of a thing. And you can't control. So you become control freaks, for lack of another term. And you live within the confines of your, the limitations you put on yourself. Because those are limitations. So those people, you that's boring. <laughs> that's not living life that is not having fun so live live more take risks everything in life i always say is taking a risk becoming a parent taking a risk getting married taking a risk starting a new job or career or business taking a risk going scuba diving taking a risk you know everything is taking a risk because we don't know tomorrow's not promised us we don't always know the end anyway so why not do something that makes you feel great. And I'm telling you, you will feel so happy that you did it. Go, wow, I did it. Spontane and I know like there's people I have befriended in life and they were the opposite of that. I'm the spontaneous one and they're like, uh, they got to plan everything and we compliment each other. While it's great for me to learn from that person, you know, planning out things and 
maybe calendarizing events so I can look at my calendar and go, okay, I'm going to do this on this date, this date, and it helps me to stay structured and organized. And then for that type of individual, I bring the spontaneity, learning how to do stuff and just have fun and enjoy life. Don't be so intense and uptight because everything don't always work out. When you live your life that way, you, like I said, you add more stress because when something doesn't work out, you get bent out of shape and you cause yourself just to feel unhappy, unsatisfied, and it was unnecessary. And so you have to change the mindset and do things a different way. And so that's the one thing I wanted to talk about, how we invest time and money and, and to our, we should invest into our, our own time doing things that's for us. It's not selfish. Investing money in us, whether it's doing something to take care of yourself or it's planning trips or doing something that costs our money or sowing seeds into something, whatever it is, investing into things or, or businesses, whatever, ministry, anything. But invest in our mind and our spirit is important as well. Feeding your spirit, feeding that mind. Maybe you need, you keep saying, I'm going to get to that book and I'm going to read this book and you never do. I've done that. Like, oh my gosh. And so what I do sometimes is carry my book or something with me. Something I want to get to at work in my car. So when I have a break, I'll, I don't care if it's a chapter or two. Just do something like that, you know. So those are different things that you can do to invest in your, your time, your money, your, your mind, your spirit, whatever. And I wanted to talk about, and I think I kind of went over it. Some of you have to learn how to do that. You actually have to learn how to invest in yourself because you weren't groomed. You weren't trained that way. We weren't raised that way to put ourselves first. And understand that that is so important because you are important, whether you believe it or not, you are important. And if you're not good, good, then you can't be good for anybody else. So that was number one. Number two, I had to write these things down because I did not want to forget because I am really, really <laughs> tired at this moment. But I didn't want to forget this to do this broadcast. Two is... Oh, okay. So two is I wanted to share someone. I was speaking with somebody earlier and she was talking about the emotional pain that she felt because and that's, I told her it was so funny because I did an introduction video on this topic about how we can invest so much into other people. And sometimes it's not even worth it. Nobody told you to do it. Sometimes you have to check yourself. Who told you to do that? Sometimes we do go over and beyond. Sometimes God called us to do that. And that's what relationship is all about. And I, I mentioned this to her too. It's inconvenience yourself sometimes. Sacrificing. That's what relationship is. That's what Jesus did for us. He sacrificed his life. Laid it down for us. No, we were not wor worthy of it. But he did it because he loved us. So when you're in relationship with people, you're going to do that sometime. And somebody's going to do that for you. Sacrifice things for you. Inconvenience themselves for you for that moment. That's what relationship is all about. But... She was just talking and venting about the pain that she put into someone and all the sacrifices she made and the money and the resources. And I mean, even got other people to um, help, you know, these particular a particular individual and how this same individual just kind of shut her down, cut her off. I mean, he really, really. It just had a whole, I don't know, it's like a different person came out. So it, so it really hurted her <laughs> and she didn't understand it. She understand it mentally, but still you're like, but I don't understand, you know, and that happened with a male, but it also happened with a female, another female. And so I, I and that's, I identify with her. I said, you know, I empathize with her and said that has to hurt because she stopped going do the through the list not that she invested in her for self gain she did it out of love and compassion but it still hurt you're still human and it still was like i i just i don't know how to and i said you know what i said from this experience you're gonna learn like i did because that happened to me as well or somebody even lied on me thank god the truth came out and most people that knew me know that that that's not cheryl cheryl that's not i would have to be out of my mind to do the things the person said i or something that I didn't do, whatever. But um, I said, you learn lessons from this and you learn to use wisdom in situations where you become more discerning of people. You try to assess 
their purpose. Why are they in your life? And what is your mission with them? What is your assignment? Whatever it is, what is the purpose of the relationship? And God will show you people. He will show you their agenda. He will show you the type of person they are. And then sometimes he will use you to bless other people for a season and then pull back. He will let you know who's the leeches, the ones who will delete from your life. I'm telling you. And so that's all part. I said, you know, it's just part of the journey in life. And yes, sometimes it really, really, really hurts. But it's things that we have to go through sometimes because that's how we learn. We learn through lessons like that. You know, sometimes it takes those heart, oh my God, wrenching pain <laughs> to learn those lessons. Because you, you, like I said, you invest your time and money. When you invest emotionally in somebody, that pretty much, that hurts more than investing your money and time. Because you emotionally attach to the person, you love, you care about the individual or individuals. And when they do something like that to you, it just really, really, really just changes. It, it just disrupts you for a second. But you know what? Like I said, you learn from that, you get up. And when you do decide to invest in people, you deal with a different mindset. Like I was telling her, after those things, that thing happened to me, or I had that type of experience, I decided that, you know, what I'm going to stick with the scripture when it says, whatever you do it, do it as unto the Lord. Whatever you do for other people, you do it as unto the Lord. So I'm not looking at the individual. They may have a whole lot of issues and maybe is I'm led. So one of the other things I want to mention is being led to help certain individuals. Maybe I feel something in my spirit or unction or pressing to do something, but understanding that I don't have to bring them into my inner circle. Everybody's not meant to come into your inner circle in that a certain space, but from where you are, you meet the needs of that person, you help that person, and you wish them God look, God speak, God bless. So, and then your mindset is I'm doing this because I'm led to do this. I'm not looking for anything back to you. We don't have to be friends. You know, sometimes you'll be led to help a person that really don't even care for you, but for some reason, it is your you have a mandate from God. To be a blessing in some kind of way. To help to support. And then you leave it. That's it. You wash your hands and you leave it alone. And when you work, operate in that mindset. Then you don't get bent out of shape like you did before. You're not investing so much of your emotions into that um, individual. And that can save you. That's a guard. But, it's, but, you, but you're not guarded to the point where you're not able to bless anybody. You're not hurt walking around wounded and when your God of saying, that's it. I ain't, I'm not befriending. I'm not doing that for anybody no more. You're not walking around with all that anger. Now you're doing it from another perspective and you're saying, you know what? I'm going to do this. God bless you. That's it. Oh, don't, don't worry about it. You know, and that's it. And you take a lot. The weight is off of you. <laughs> it is off of you. So you have to learn. So then you learn how to do something, you know, um, learning how to do things in a different way, like I always say, um, and having a different mindset and different perspective out of the whole situation. So sometimes you have to go through those experiences to really learn, you know, you know, and those things are going to happen. You, like I said, you can't control everything. You can't control everybody. <laughs> It'd be nice sometimes if we can, but we can't. So I said, but you know what? It was meant to happen. It, the severing was meant to occur. So this way, now you can put all your time and your energy and your resources into you your family and what you are doing because now you have moved into another season and it's so apparent the things that are happening for her till she don't even have time to contend with stuff and drama and issues her people got to go through their own journey and it's okay and then maybe you'll come around full circle and everything will be as it was before you have to let god deal with people so if they if it, if it means you have to separate if it means you have to delete then do so look you gotta it's about saving your mind and your mental health as well okay <laughs> you gotta save yourself so it's all good i said all things work together for the good to them who love the lord and who are called according to his purpose so it's gonna work good for you. it's gonna work good for her maybe she gotta go through this maybe he gotta go through whatever it is and when they go through their journey because we all do have a different path some of us are going to have to get near the cliff and almost hanging off before we, we get a wake up like, you know, OK, I got to I got to get my life right. You know, some of us are like those children. You know how sometimes we have different children and, some, you know, some of course you have different children. You have more than one child, <laughs> but you may have one child where you don't have to say too much to them. They listen pretty much the first and second time when you raise the tone of your voice. But then that other child, they don't have any fear. They're kind of rebellious 
and they would just go to that cliff and, and still try to do whatever you tell them not to do. And so that child will end up learning a harder le or learning a lesson to, a, more in a difficult way. You know, it's going to take a lot, a lot of <laughs> falling and bumping their head and bruising before they get it and for the light bulb go on. And then you may have the other child that say, OK, all right, OK. And they're good. You don't have to spank them or you don't have to punish them. They got it. All you have to do is raise your voice and they're like, OK, that was enough for them because they still fear and respect you. But that other child, they may love you. But for some reason, they just got to go and try it. That curiosity, whatever it is, they just got to go and try it. So, you know, so we're like that. We're all different. We have different paths. We have different journeys. So that I just thought that was just so interesting and right on time. And the third thing I wanted to share, and I did kind of touch a little bit about being more discerning, being led, having that. Yeah, so this is really a summary that mind, you're changing your mindset and how you deal with things and really operating in wisdom. That's what it's all about. Operating in wisdom because wisdom would teach you how to take care of yourself and don't run yourself, like I said, ragged, bent out of shape, emotional, emotionally messed up, wounded, being that victim, always in that victim mode. Can't live life like that. Not fun at all. And then you draw people away. But so when you do that, then you have a different approach to situations like that and to people like that. And so number four would be getting into mm -hmm. yourself. And it's so awesome because when you do get to that point, you know what, I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going just in every area of my life. That's attracting. So for the single woman out there, that's attracting to a man because you put in time into yourself. You know, you looking good, you feeling good, you taking care of things. That's very attractive to people and, you know, it can be a major turn on. So because I know for me, I'm attracted to that, you know, men who are confident. They took out the time to invest in themselves in different areas in their life, financially, mentally, educationally, whatever. I like that more than other things. I'm like, wow, because I'm a mental, I'm mental. So I'm like mentally stimulated. I'm more mentally stimulated than I am physically. So just the deep conversations and, and mm -hmm. listening to the intellect and the wisdom that, you know, a man may share to me. I'm like, wow, that's awesome. So we can have these deep conversations, you know, because I haven't encountered men, you know, who kind of like me or whatever. But they just couldn't stimulate me mentally. It's like I'm carrying a conversation and I don't like to do that. I'm, I'm listening to you. I'll let you talk, even though I can talk. But I love to let him talk. And listen and gain and learn but I there was a couple of times I might met, met may have met somebody a man and this left it open to him to share and he just really didn't they didn't really have anything to say and I feel like I had to pull stuff out of a hat like uh and I right there I'm like okay this this is not gonna and I give it I'll give it I gave it another try talked to them two or three times on the phone it was like dead spots I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> I know myself. I can't. It felt like I had to work. I'm like, wow. Because I have male friends, married and single, or people, you know, uh, co-laborers in ministry or co-workers at work who they, they, they on it. You know, they have a lot to share and to talk about wisdom, experiences, knowledge in a lot of different areas. So you can tell they about stuff. Their life is more full. That's what I like. Like, see, now I just need to find somebody who's like that. Beside, he got to love God first. <laughs> and I'll be cool. But anyway, so that's why a lot of us, we still on the threshing floor. We just waiting, waiting, waiting for that. We're not just waiting, not doing anything. We're taking care of ourselves. But I'm saying we in, we all on that threshing floor like Ruth was when she met Boaz. Positioning ourselves. Because that's what we're doing, right? We're investing in ourselves. For those of us who want to get married, we are positioning ourselves to be found. And we want to be found whole. Holistic health. That's what it's all about. And so I'm going to chill. So I hope you guys have a good evening. Get your life back.